How do you pull a thermostat wire? Tips for pulling thermostat wires. Today I've got a thermostat wire I've got to pull and I'm using my multimeter to measure a call for the heating operation from the thermostat to test whether the thermostat or the thermostat wire is bad. And if you want to learn more about pulling a thermostat wire, I'm going to bring you along today. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Set the thermostat to heating, 90 degrees, mode heat, heating. Once it stops blinking, that means it's energized. Let me show you the wiring. We got C and R, that's our two 24 volt wires. Then we've got white for our first stage of heating, which is W1, black, second stage heating, and then we've got yellow, first stage cooling, orange, second stage cooling. G is for the fan. This is a two-stage gas, two-stage cooling unit. It works in cooling, but right now I'm having trouble. It's not working in heating. So I think we have a bad thermostat wire. We want to make sure it's programmed correctly. And we want to make sure that we have voltage outside. So we'll go through the programming really quickly here. This is a ACONT 724. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit next, 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 next. Hit select for more than five seconds. And then we're going to go to installer settings. Equipment type. Select. Oh, it is not a heat pump. It is AC. Then we go to next, outdoor unit stages. It's two stage. We go to next compressor type, one compressor but two stage. Next indoor unit is gas. Boom. All right, so we got it set to gas. All right. We can go to airflow settings, but we've set this up. All right, now let's go to done. All right, heating. Set it to 79, boom. Now we'll wait until that stops blinking and we should have a call. Heating stage two, so unit should be on. So when we have a call, we should have power between the blue and the white wire, the common and the W1. What do we got? Looks like we've got zero, right? Make sure those little micro leads are touching. This one over here too zero volts correct all right and that's volts ac put your meter to volts ac now take and touch the red and the white wire together and see what happens and what happens it comes on now what you can do is you can take the red and the white at the thermostat and you can touch these together. And then if it works at the thermostat by touching these wires together, then that means your thermostat could be bad, right? But we've already done that and we know that touching the white and the red together at the thermostat does not make the unit come on, okay? Now touching it here, it does. So obviously there's a break in the wire. Now what can we do? We can ohm out the wire or we can cut a section of the wire out, or we can replace the whole wire. So there's our American Standard Package Unit. We just replaced it. We've looked for splices. Here's the crawl space. It's actually really nice. And you can see, there's where the thermostat wire comes in, right there, okay? I don't see any splices, but you can see it runs this way. And then there it is. And then here is where it goes up through the floor. All right. So, oh, wait a second. Oh, it's crushed right here. Oh, wow, it's crushed. Oh, okay. So probably found where, the, where we need to replace it. Okay. 
tie the red and the white wire together. So white was for W1, red is your hot. So now we should be energizing that first stage of heat. And this is a test you can do to see if it's the wire or if it's the thermostat. Uh, mainly testing to see if the thermostat's bad. Because if this worked and the thermostat's not energizing, then that means the thermostat is bad. Took the old thermostat wire loose, getting ready to pull the new thermostat wire. All right, now I'm tying the new thermostat wire to the old thermostat wire. And I'm going to pull it from here all the way back to the unit. It's loose. I made sure. And what I usually do is I take two wires like this. Okay. I cut the rest of them off. And then I take two of the other wires and I cut the rest of them off. And then I take and separate them like this like that and then I'll take each one and I'll tie twist them together like this okay like that right there all right and then I'll fold that in the direction where I'm pulling right here so that if I pull it through a hole you know, there's going to be tape around this too, but you want to make sure that it's not like this because if you pull it through a hole, this is going to snag. So I keep it like this and then I do the other one. Same thing. Like this right here. Let me know how you pull thermostat wires. I'm doing this video just because. I really don't even have to tie these together. We're in a crawl space. I can just pull it over there. I mean, but I'm doing this just because I want to show you. I've got some people that have requested the thermostat wire video. And then what I do is I just tape it. You know, that way it doesn't pull apart. If you're pulling it inside of a wall, you want to have it taped. You want to have the wires tied together. And over here, you see where these wires are kind of sticking out. I'll take and smash all of this. Because I don't want that catching on anything. Oh, I got twisted up here. And you can go back over it if you want. But this is what it should look like. All right. Now, for the roll, it's good to put have somebody to hold the roll. And then you can put a, I usually use like a piece of string or wire. And somebody can hold it like this. And then you can pull it. Or you can set it up somewhere. Now, we'll, we'll get it set up with something. All right. If you don't have anybody to help you, you can take and make a loop with your wire. And then take a couple screws and screw this wire that goes through the thermostat reel here to the joist and then you can pull it yourself but if you got somebody with you then they can just hold it like this and then you can pull the wire right off the reel so little tip now I'm just going to pull this wire and you can see look at that now I'm going to come over to the next section of the wire alright Now all we gotta do is pull it right through there. All right, so I'm gonna pull some more slack. All right, there's the end of the wire. All right. Excellent. All right. There it is. New thermostat wire. All right, hopefully you understand a little bit more about pulling a stat wire now. We got enough. enough? Yeah, cut it, go ahead and make the splice. All right, now we got all the wires stripped, ready to start connecting. 
You want to make sure you have wire staples so you can staple up the stat wire. Make it look nice and neat. And look, we cut out that spot that was crushed. Look at that. I don't see how that lasted that long. But guaranteed, after we installed this unit, the guys pulled on it the right way and boom, it's over. So, you know, it's not uncommon for you to go install a new unit and then something else is wrong. It's just like going to replace a part and then another part's bad. We replaced some suction uh, pressure transducers on a unit and the fan motor was going out. It was one of those variable speed fan motors. Uh, the unit would work on uh, cooling every now and then. The fan would work and then sometimes it would go off. But then the real indicator that the fan was bad was when we turned the fan to the on setting, the fan would not work. So make sure you know how to test or you just make sure you test everything because you want to know exactly what the problem is. With this, I thought it's got to be the programming. Maybe it's a wire that's wrong in the wrong place, but look, we found it crushed underneath the house. So, and it's not really, I, I, you know, I could have owned out the wire and what you do is you can take you know, the white and black wire and tie them together on one end and then put your meter into ohms and then go to the other end and, you know, see if it reads a continuity because if it's tied together, it should. And then take it apart and see if it's, you know, open loop, no continuity. But for me, I didn't have an extra wire. I had one extra wire, but I needed two extra wires. So I might as well just pull a new stat wire, but glad we found this problem. Uh, and it'll be better off. I don't like making splices. I like to pull a whole new wire, but um, when it comes to pulling the wire up through the wall, it was stapled and talked to the customer and really didn't want to have to um, have any sheetrock work done. So I explained the option and they said, that sounds great. So make sure you communicate too. Communication is the key to you being successful, uh, to you having good relationships with not only the people you work with, but your customers. I'm going to get some wire ties for this. All right, last wire. Oh, what is this? I don't know what kind of thermostat wire this was. Let me know if you guys ever have to pull thermostat wires. Let me know your methods. And uh, let me know your experiences. Something's wrong with that nut. All right, let's get some wire ties. Let's get some wire staples and a hammer. If you need a good light for working in dark places like crawl spaces that has a magnet O light, this light is awesome. It's got a magnet, little swivel, works great and it's super bright. All right, we are ready. We got the new thermostat wire. Everything's wired up. Pull the new thermostat wire. The unit is working now. We got a two-stage gas valve. Reset the gas pressure. If you don't know how to set gas pressure, I'm gonna put a few videos down below for setting gas pressure for propane, for natural gas. For this unit, it's two-stage, so the low needs to be set for 1.8 inches of water column and the high stage needs to be set for three and a half inches of water column because this is natural gas. There's the old thermostat wire. Now when I sold this job the customer wanted to have uh, two new thermostats one for each unit that way they all match in the house so I'm going to go set up the thermostat for the upstairs unit which is this unit and it's a heat pump. How do we know that? It's got an accumulator and it's got a reversing valve behind this panel right here. You'd have to look. And uh, this is a five ton unit. See? 4YCZ5060. So 60,000 BTU. That is five tons. And this says heat pump. And this is a three and a half ton. It's a 42. See that? 3042. So 2012. Overall, did a great job on the rain shield and the install. Now while it's running, check from common to W1, blue to white, we got 26 volts, so everything's working. All right, 
going to turn it back on the cooling mode, make sure it works. Here's the user guide and installation instructions. And then you go to page number seven, equipment type. We're going to choose heat pump. All right. Here's the wiring. We got common and red. That's our 24 volts. W1. We got O and B. B is if it energizes in heating. O is if it energizes in cooling. Fan. And then stage one for cooling. All right. Now we're going to hit menu. Menu. Next. 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 Select. Three, four, five. Installer setting. Make sure when you set it for heat pump, SOV operation, solenoid valve operation. Does it energize in cooling or in heating? For this setup, it's going to be with cooling. Okay? So, I'm going to go back in. Oh, back. Equipment type. Oh, select. Outdoor unit, heat pump. Next, outdoor unit stages, one. Next, indoor unit type, it is electric. Next, indoor unit stages, that's oh, going to be two for the heating. And then next, fan type, it's not variable, it's non-variable. Next, SOV operation with cooling, done done all right now we're going to try it out cooling excellent anytime you install a new unit you should be going through your commissioning process you should be making sure the unit works in cooling and in heating and how do you know it's in cooling well it should be warm air discharging out of the top and your suction line your vapor line right here should be nice and sweaty and nice and cold make sure you check superheat and subcooling